Every once in a while in the VEX program, you realize that you need something to extend, and quite often that's done with a pivot that just flips out. One problem with just a pivot though is that it can still flex back in and this can cause some problems. What you really need is a mechanism to prevent the pivot from flexing once it has straightened itself out. I'm Caden here from Kepler Electronics, and today we are going to be talking about locking mechanisms. Here in front of me I have five different locking mechanisms straight out of the oven, each of which uses a different method, along with a different way of arranging the bars. My hope is that by looking at the different possibilities you can find the right solution for your specific circumstance. It almost certainly will not be plug and play, but you can take the ideas shared here and apply them in your own designs. Now without further ado, here's the first mechanism. This one I'll call the overlap. This one simply has a screw with a Teflon washer between as the pivot with the second bar stacked on top. The whole assembly pivots around before getting stopped by this small L-beam. You could maybe use a plate for the stop, but if you're using a lot of rubber bands on the mechanism, that has the potential to bend out, so I'd recommend using either L-channel or C-channel. The part that actually holds the bar in place is this standoff. It's attached to this axle using the common threaded rod into shaft collar trick. It starts off low, but as the bar pivots, it gets pushed up and over in a sort of pinching motion before falling back down on the other side. There's a small spacer down here to prevent the bar from moving too far, and to ensure the bar is always in the right place, there's a super small screw and rubber band just to add a bit of tension. This mechanism has a bit of slop, but not so much as to render it unusable. There are probably some modifications that can be made to improve it, but I'll leave that to you. The second mechanism is the gusset pivot. The gusset hinge itself pushes the pivot off the plane of the C-channel, giving the pivot motion a sort of up and out maneuver which helps prevent the bars from conflicting in the process. The pivot uses an L-shaped lock bar with screws on the ends. This is held down by rubber bands and glides over this spacer bar before falling down and locking into place. The screw heads act as sort of teeth to prevent the lock bar from pulling up and letting go. This mechanism does have a bit more slop, but that can be remedied with a little modification to the teeth. The third mechanism is the custom bearing pivot. This one uses a different hinge mechanism due to having to cope with the empty space in the middle of the C-channel, but the locking mechanism is basically the same, save for using pillow bearings here to both hold the lock bar and the catch. As is almost always the case, rubber bands are used to make sure everything works and isn't flopping all over. This one has a bit of slop, but in the opposite direction this time, as the bearings for the hinge mechanism have about a millimeter or two of extra distance. For the fourth mechanism, I tried to use the VEX hinge for a wider option. The hinge is set off the spacers because there was some rubbing and friction happening between the hinge and the arms before. The locking mechanism for this is completely different, using cut plates which deflect downward when this standoff comes into contact with the slope. This pushes the plates down and out of the way until the standoff clears the point, after which it moves back up and traps the standoff in the notch, thereby holding the bar in place. While there is a noticeable gap between the bars, the notch does a really good job of mitigating this gap and preventing much slop. While this looks complicated, it actually really isn't. This was made by eyeballing it using a bolt cutter and a pair of needle nose pliers. If you have access to a laser cutter or if VEX allows 3D printing in the future, you could always use technology to make these perfect. The fifth mechanism is the breakaway. This mechanism uses a standoff bar that goes across the gap. This uses a loose screw to allow it to pivot in this manner, sort of up and over. The small bars are trim pieces of C or L channel. It doesn't really matter what material it is, I just had these lying around and thought they looked alright. On the other side of the pivot is a standoff bar which is mounted using an axle. It doesn't really need to be an axle as the pivot really doesn't matter that much. There's a zip tie holding it pretty tightly down, and when the pivot is closed, this pushes the standoff bar out of the way, where it then slams back into place, locking the mechanism shut. However, if enough force is applied, it can break away, allowing a sort of protection in case something goes wrong. If this isn't desired, this can probably be modified to remove this, perhaps by increasing the distance that the top bar has to swing, or by increasing the tension. I hope you enjoyed this look at a few different ways to lock a hinge into place. This is a very useful tool to have in your arsenal, especially when working within a tight size constraint. If you enjoyed this, you may want to check out the video I made on a custom ratchet design. It uses similar ideas and mechanisms to accomplish a different task. The link can be found in the description. I also compete in combat robotics, so if you're interested in that, you may be interested to check out my video on Blastwave, my one pound combat robot. Thanks for watching, and keep designing!